Welcome back. This is Redis with another episode in the Chicago Bears franchise. We're coming off a rather depressing loss against the Green Bay Packers. We lost because we had a fumbled ball very close to their end zone. I'm not even going to think about that. But Dave Montgomery dropped the ball, was picked up, and then returned to the, I don't know, the, I think it was a 40-yard line or something. Cole Komet he managed to hold them, managed to stop the runner, but the damage was done. We got another touchdown against us, then it was 21-14. We couldn't catch up in one minute, something. So here we go. We're going to kick off this uh, this episode in bye week, week seven. And then Lions week is next week, a home game at last again. Um, and we're going to kick off with the players negotiation. There's quite a few that we need to negotiate with. Cole Komet is definitely a head scratcher, but more players are, you know, becoming available right now. Uh, I want to keep Cole, you know. I want to keep him around. I don't really know what the problem was with the offer last time. I have no clue what the big deal was. I'm going to give him a five-year deal. I will put that down to six years. Maybe the length is a problem. I have no clue. But uh, yeah, let's go. All right. Cole Komet accepts. That is great. And next up, it's Equinemius St. Brown, who is a wide receiver that I actually appreciate quite a lot. Um, I think he's doing really well. Um, didn't expect him to be this important for me, uh, but you know, his, his catching abilities are awesome. So I want to keep him around. Um, I think that we might even get away with, uh, with uh, the regular offer. I'm going to give him a four year deal. Um, I'm going to hike this up to 3.8, going to hike this up to 1.8. Let's see what he says. Uh, and it's okay. All right, because he's not interested, we will have to offer him a little bit more. Uh, Robert Quinn won't get a new deal. Chase Claypool, I do want to keep him around. Justin Jones, Travis Gibson. There's quite a few players here that I'm a little bit on the fence about, but uh, then there's also a few that are going to be very, very easy choices indeed. Okay, that is a check mark for bye week. Um, now I will take care of the weekly strategy. What we will be doing is just a half pad training and splits because I just want to make sure that everybody regains a little bit of a composure here and uh, that we get, uh, get some of the fitness levels back to normal. And that basically is going to be the target for this week's training. Offensive training results are here and uh, yeah, I'm just going to move through them. You can pause if you do want to see a uh, player. But since it was only half pads, it's not too many experience points. Don't expect anything here. Basically looking for injuries. We have none. That is fantastic. So we will now be heading straight into next week. Oh, we have to take care of this. Coach, being in last place, heading into the bye week means that this time off could be crucial in figuring out how to right the ship. Any special plans? Uh, we're gonna stay grinding. We need the experience points. Need to be firing on all cylinders coming out of the bye, so we're sticking to the grind. Don't want these guys rusty or sluggish. Yeah, that just makes sense, doesn't it? All right, 500 XP for all players, but of course, minus seven stamina. All right, it's week eight, home game against the Lions now. Let's take a look at the mock draft number two. We are being put here, left edge Corey Foreman is uh, being named as an interesting prospect for us. Um, he does look interesting. Quite good stats, actually. Could be replacing Travis Gibson. So Corey Foreman might even be an interesting player for us. Um, I will add him to the, uh, to, uh, to the pool of players that we are currently watching. Um, I was actually going to go for a center. And uh, the center is not currently touted here in the um, in this in this mock draft as being uh, an early pick. Corey Foreman here. We're going to add him to the favorites. I'm going to show you who I have favorited so far. I've got James Brockermeyer. He's a center, of course. I'm still looking for a good center for the future. Uh, we've got Chad Lindbergh, right guard. Pierce Fisher, and you might ask yourself, why these players? Because those are the only scheme fit players that I could find in the draft. I just added them. Um, there's quite a few interesting ones in here. Amarius Mims, right tackle. Look at those attributes on the right. It's AAAA. 
basically. So that's pretty good. Left tackle Pierce Fisher, same thing. Corey Foreman. So, I mean, I'm just going to let this slumber a little bit longer. Don't have to decide anything right now. Uh, I also want to see how uh, Max Mitchell will be developing. Next up, another chance to sign players. Uh, Equinemius Sim Brown. Uh, we can give him another deal. Uh, and here we go. Cole Komet, we already signed. I just forgot that. Here we go. Four-year deal. We're going to put this up to four mil and two mil. That is not too crazy of a deal. Um, but uh, I don't want to give him much more. All right. Good. So Equinemius St. Brown stays. We still have a bunch of money in the top right corner. That is positive. Uh, might help us sign some good players uh, in free agency. We're going to delegate the national scouting focus. And with that, we are ready to take a look at the Lions. Quarterback, Jared Goff, 28-85. We've got Joshua Dobbs behind him and Gardner Minshew. What a bunch of backup quarterbacks right there. But Jared Goff, actually not that horrible. He is getting better. Also in real life, he's had a really good season, actually, in the uh, 2022 season. The Lions better than many would have expected them to be. Running back, DeAndre Swift injured. He was one of my uh, players on the Dolphins franchise, only a backup then, but uh, really not bad. Alexander Madison, Zach Evans, and Eric Gray. Let me just check out Alexander Madison, because I think, yeah, it was a Minnesota Viking up to this season. So a uh, decent running back room, I would say. Fullback is Jason Kabinda. Wide receivers, Eamon Ross and Brown injured. This is the brother of Equinemius and Brown, and that is a huge deal that he's injured, because a 96 rated wide receiver would hurt us. Jameson Williams injured. Wow, that is crazy, man. So we've got Tim Patrick, Quintus Cephas, and Jamarcus Bradley, who are going to be the wide receivers. This might even give us a shot. Tight end, Michael Mayer. That is a blow. Foster Moreau, uh, I think he joined from uh, from this, the uh, Raiders. Yeah, Las Vegas Raiders was his former team, James Mitchell. But the real, the real player that hurts here is a Michael Mayer. He has a normal dev trade here, but he's just really such, such a good tight end. And he was such a fantastic player in uh, the uh, Miami Dolphins franchise. Such a great player to have. Catching, acceleration, speed, catching traffic, short routes, spectacular catch. Plus, he can also block. And that is something that is really, really uh, important um, on a tight end because he will help you out along the way. So we're playing one of my favorite players currently. Um, on Madden and also in real life. Taylor Decker, 29.85. Greg a little behind him. Left guard, Jonah Jackson, 26 and 80. Nick Broker, a rookie behind him. At center, Frack Ragnow, the center stalwart, 27.91. Darian Delcourt is a rookie center. Right guard, Halafulivati by Tai, 30 and 78. Max Sharping behind him. Right tackle, Panay Sewell, an absolute superstar at the right tackle position out of Oregon. Now, we had his brother Noah Sewell out of the draft in the Dolphins franchise, ad, but PNA man is just such a good player. Left edge, Romeo Okwara, 28 and 80. We've got Josh Pascal as the backup here. Right edge, Aiden Hutchinson, Julian Okwara. And uh, Aiden Hutchinson, I have to say, he is quickly become one of my favorite players in the NFL because he's just such a brutal player, such a nasty player. And not nasty in the term of being unfair, but just relentless. Really, really relentless. Breaking through and then getting in. What a good defensive player he is. D-tackle. Matthew Ioannidis uh, is 29.78. Elim McNeil and Levi Onwazarike. Ioannidis, I think he joined uh, from another team. Yeah, Carolina Panthers and Washington uh, Commanders before. Left outside linebacker Darius Harris and behind him Jalen Reeves Mabin. This is a rather weak room to be honest. Mid linebacker Alex Anzalone, decent. Landon Collins, decent. And Tanner Muse, these are solid players. David Ugu. Oh Jesus. Ugwegbu. Ugwegbu. Yeah, go that right. Second try. All right. Rookie out of Oklahoma. Normal dev trade. Right outside linebacker Malcolm Rodriguez, 24 77. And Ivan Pierce Jr. Malcolm Rodriguez. Also Oklahoma State, 77 overall. Where did he come from? Detroit out of the 2022 draft. All right. Quarterback, Jeff Okuda. He's a really good quarterback. 92, 94, 91. Speed, acceleration, agility. 
Mike Hughes, 90, 92, 94. Dane Jackson, 91, 94, 91. Keely Ringo, 94, 91, 85. Stevenson and a Turner. Yeah, they're also there, also quick and all that. I mean, just look at that. 96, 93, 85. That is, that's wild. But Keely Ringo, he is a really good corner. I also had him on the Dolphins franchise. So a lot of players here that uh, I usually, that I had last time around, and they are real bangers. Uh, this is a really good cornerback group. Really liking this one here. Free safety, Juan Thornhill, Lamarcus Joyner, and Gino Stone. Just a solid room. Kirby Joseph and Ifiato Milifonwu. Um, decent. And the kicker, Jason Myers. The punter, Jack Fox. And uh, now we are tasked with uh, coming up with a weekly strategy that will work. I think the short pass is the most doable. Um, because... That should be should be doable actually. I think I think we can we can get that done. So let's get going here. Uh, we've got the uh, left edge with a split, right edge with the starter, D tackle gonna train the starters. That's Beasley, Tranquil will go for splits. Weaver gonna be the starter, cornerback is going to be a split. Um, then free safety and strong safety. All right, everybody handled so far. What about the offensive game plan? A blitz counter. Yeah, that would probably make sense, right? But we're gonna go for the runs here. I like the run plays. I like setting those up and then we can always decide what to do. So we're gonna go in with split here and a split there and another split. The wide receiver is also a split. Tight end, ah, he needs to get better quickly. I have to, I have to go like this. Don't really wanna do that, but I have to do this. Braxton Jones, starter. Larry Borum, starter. Max Mitchell, starter. Right guard, Tevin Jenkins, starter. And Logan Brown, also starter. So basically a lot of starting <laughs> training here. Over here, I was thinking of maybe replacing Jalen Carter here as a focus player because he's already pretty good anyways. And I was thinking of dropping in here. Where is he? Uh, either Aaron Beasley or... JJ Weaver. And I think I'm going to use JJ Weaver because he does have that hidden death trait. want to find out what that is. Uh, we will get five sacks on the quarterback. We're going to allow 20 points. We're going to get 250 yards and we're going to win the turnover battle. Defense is ready. There's a shoulder. Oh, quite a few injuries. Carlos Dunlap. That doesn't hurt me. Jack Sanborn. Luckily, that doesn't hurt me as well because he's the backup. Drew Tranquil is the starting player here. But that's what happens when you go with full pads. Shoulder strain for Nick Baldwin. That is... Jesus, man. A lot of injuries. Darnell Mooney, hip pointer. Oh, my Lord. Did I overdo it with training? Should have gone for splits, probably. Let's just check out the injury list. Is there anything bad? That's no, just a week for everybody. Just a week for everybody. Okay. But that's not too bad. But, uh, yeah, let's upgrade the players. David Montgomery, our running back. I think I'm going to put some points here. Um, let's try and make him tougher. The power back really needs, needs to be a little bit more pronounced. Darnell Mooney injured at the moment, but we're going to push him up to an 85 now. I don't like that he has a hit pointer now. Justin Fields will get points into Improviser. Just going to keep pushing him. Morale is down, of course, due to the loss last week. Jaquan Brisker. Run support. Our number nine. Next up, Khalil Herbert. Back up running back. We'll get some points into the elusive back category. I we're just going to try and bump him up as quickly as we can. This is a very decent player. Equinemius to Brown recently re-signed in New Deal. So we're going to keep developing him, of course, at 77 right now. Braxton Jones, a lift tackle into power. Let's try and toughen up the players here as much as we can. Felix Anadike Uzoma, speed rusher. Right edge, that's a rookie. That is the rookie with a normal death threat, and at age 21, he's already 77. This is good. This is promising. I like that. Michael Loji Medea, 74. Currently, Jack Sanborn, sadly injured. I like him. 
I like him a lot, but uh, right now, not able to play. He might be a player for the future at age 23. We'll just have to see what, what we can get done with him. JJ Weaver, he's far away from being uh, from being uh, a scheme fit. So what do we do? Speed rusher or run stopper? Let's go with the speed rusher. I want my players to, to really attack. Attack, 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 and that's what I want. Every young cornerback gets additional upgrade points here. Also with a hidden death trait. I would really like him to improve quickly. Gonna put this into agile. Of course, he's not a scheme fit, but he's younger, so I feel like we will be able to push him into the right direction at some point in time. Uh, gonna put this into agile as well on the right tackle position. Here for Logan Brown. Nick Bond, again, he sadly is injured. With the shoulder strain out for a week. Damon Miller gets an upgrade. Our free safety, also a rookie. He's got a hidden deficit. I fear that he will not be revealed unless I really slap him into the starting position, which will not happen. Cornelius Johnson, 63, start of trade. So he is improving quite nicely out of Michigan. Uh, but we're going to have to see. We're going to have to see what happens. Manage staff. Let's put some points into the staff as well. There we go. And we will now be fully upgrading the, uh, the defensive coordinator. And next up, we will be taking a look at our head coach, at Coach Tredius, and just keep keep pouring points into him to help us along the way. The lineup, let's adjust that. We have left tackle Jones, Bora, Mitchell, Jenkins, Brown. That looks good. Equinemius to Brown. We've got Cornelius Johnson over there now. That is actually pretty cool. Defense is also looking nice. Travis Gibson. Do I need Robert Quinn, by the way? Do I actually need him? I've got Vinny Curry as a mentor. Robert Quinn would be... Is he a mentor as well? Yeah. So, I will be keeping him and I will be cutting Vinny Curry. Because I just don't need him right here. What position does he play? Is he a left edge? Yeah, he's a left edge. And Robert Quinn is a left edge as well, right? Just checking. Uh, we're just checking, right? We're just talking. Now he's at right edge. Okay, so that won't help me that much. Okay, we're going to leave it as it is. Uh, we've got Anadiki Yuzoma here. Avery Young is over there. And up here. I mean, we could try and put Miller into the free safety category. Get him as many snaps as we can. But that might be a problem. And it's 20 points below... That is a big ask. I don't think that that will be clever. So all of that said and done. I think we're ready to head into the game now against the Detroit Lions. Going to be a tricky game. Soldier Field here in Chicago. What a classic stadium. This is today's venue for the game against the Lions. And uh, Jared Goff, 320 yards last week. Three touchdowns, 23 completions. Justin Fields, he, he, he is really having good games. So I'm not really too concerned about the quarterback situation. It is different to other teams and rebuilds where you really have to rebuild from the uh, from the quarterback position. And here come the lines. I gave them the color rush variant, which is the gray. That looks nice. We are going to line up in the home uniforms, blue, white and blue. And uh, I think we're ready, ready to dive into the game. We, of course, want to put pressure on them. And that's what we do. So the defense holds them. We're at the 21-yard line. We're going to start with an inside zone run here towards the left. And it's immediately looking pretty congested. So let us try and go for this one here. Going to be looking for Cole Komet. Dragged down by number 31. That was quick, but we get 8 yards. And this is the way that we're going to be doing it. We will just be moving ahead consistently. Here we go. Kablam. Good catch by Cole Komet. Well done, man. 
Halfback zone weak, left hand side. The Lions are a notoriously good defensive team. Inclement kick and kicking arc is severely shortened. Oh, that sucks. Oh, this is a good one. But number 34, Anze Alex Anzalone does catch up. Does get a hit on the back here. And we're going to move the chains now. But... Could have broken through here. Keely Ringo also getting a hit in. Half back base. A left hand side. It's going to be a little bit towards the outside here. So uh, we need to get away from everyone. And, oh man, Alex Anzalone. Beast mode turned on. Let's take a look. What do we do? Let's go the halfback dive. If you want to get crunchy, then let's get crunchy. But number 97 right there. Aiden Hutchinson. I don't like this. Powering forward for another two yards. That is not that much. Let's go with the double cross. Gonna be looking for Montgomery or Komet. I don't think Equinemius and Brown will be a viable option. Stiff arm. And a 2 for 2 by Justin Fields. That's Jackson. All right, another inside zone, left-hand side. 43-yard line. There we go, number 44. Rodriguez gets a hand on us, drags us down. But uh, we get six yards. And another run here is what we're going to be doing. Montgomery is breathing calmly, so that is positive. And uh, yeah, no ducking beneath anyone. Third and three. Can we go for a scream? Probably not. Let's go for a middle slant. Middle slant, and uh, this is going to be Robert Woods, who I will be looking for. Montgomery's breathing hard. You can see it now. Take a look at the number 32 left. Off we go. Oh, come on, man. Robert! What the dice was that? Oh, that was horrible. Oh, and this is super nice. Oh, I love it. Can't see a thing. All right, field goal kicking will not be happening today. There's no arc. Uh, and yeah, this is Cameron Dicker. He's our kicker, but he just missed the field goal right there. Come on, defense. Defense holds him a second time. All right, let us not waste that. Let us know, and it was a quick stop as well. It was a very quick stop. Let's go with a stick. Mercedes Lewis. Oh, come on, man. Get some space. Didn't happen. Halfback quick base, left-hand side. Currently, the only way we get some uh, some ground, uh, or, or we, you know, we manage to get things up. Like Jesus Christ. Alex Anzalone. Couldn't get away. Let's go with the bench. Let's go with the bench. Cole Komet or Johnson. That is going to be my view. Probably some Brown would be a good choice as well. And that is just smacked away by Rodriguez again. 3 4 5. 55 yard field goal. Kablan. I've no idea where I'm kicking. No idea. Probably going to fall short again. Freaking hell. That's the second one we don't get done. Come on, defense. I knew it. Luck is going to run out at some point in time, and we just stretched our luck too, too far here. We're not really getting a lot done here. The midline backers are just a little bit too tough here. All right, Cole Komet. We connect here. Justin Fields to Cole Komet. That was a nice catch. What I think is really cool is the fact that uh, the inside of the gloves is super shiny. When you look at that. Like in real life. I think that is cool. Is that cool? Or uh, is it just me? 
I like the details. All right, let's go for a slant to the right side as the two-minute warning hits us. And I'd really like to level the game here. Really like to level the game. Uh, which play did we have? Mountain inside cross. Let's go with this one. Commit. It's going to go to the right outside. Going to put men in motion. And once more. It's just a hand there. Uh, is this going to be one of those games where you don't get anything done? Go, go, go! Cornelius Johnson not getting there. Also, the pass was not precise. That was not a precise one. I hate this. I hate this. Equinemius and Brown or Lewis probably are good choices. Thank you, Equinemius and Brown. That's why I paid you the money for the contract extension. It's not too long of a deal, but I think it's the four years. I think it's going to be worth it. And if not, we can always trade him at some point in time. Play action crossers. Cole Komet, Equinemius and Brown, who has to step up and be my wide receiver number one for the moment. That is beautiful. Well done, Cole Komet. Number one for the Lions. Wraps the arms around the legs. That was a good one. Good throw. Number one. Just uh, stops him cold. Let's go for a bench swap here. Equinemius would be fantastic, right? Cornelius Johnson would be a sensation. Robert Woods does look like a viable option. Ah. Well, okay. I tried, right? Let's kill the slip screen here. I'm a little bit fearful because I, you know, teams that are good on the rush usually tend to really break up screens very well. I just look at Alex Anzalone, man. Oh, he's going to be one of those players, right? Okay, this is going to be bum rush time. So I need to get it out there. We are going to do something crazy now. We're going to flip the play. It's going to be Cornelius Johnson or Cole Komet. I mean, one of these two. Yeah. I said it was going to be crazy, didn't I? Oh, my freaking hell. Am I going to miss this field goal here? Nah, it actually looks good. All right, 14-yard field goal. There we go. Seven and three. Let's try and keep keep that heading into the break. And we're up at the beginning of the second half. Could be worse. It could be worse. We're going to go for a zone fake jet here. Although I don't like that a lot. Going to go towards you right on side. Straight for Alex Anzalone. Master of disaster. Oh my goodness. And that was a good one. Wow. Breaking free of a tackle right there. Shedding that one. That was powerful. That was really powerful. Well done, man. Montgomery, you just earned my respect. All right, there we go. Tight end attack. Let's go. Let's go, Cole, man. It, it is, it is going to be down to you at some point in time. Ah, A little bit longer, probably. The throw could have been a little bit higher. Third and seven. Verticals. Let's go. Cole Komet, Equinemius and Brown, one of you two will have to do something clever here. All right. Well done, Cole. There's just no getting past these mid linebackers, and this is just a solid formation. Uh, it, it, while it doesn't look nice, right? It, it just feels a little bit over overwhelming, but my point is that if you have... Such solid midline backers, you can really work with that. They're setting up super tight here. Ah, oh, that is beautiful. David Montgomery is going to break through. Shoved out of bounds here at the 29-yard line. Really breaking through. All right, that was good. And so far, I like what he's doing because it's a, it's a good mixture, right? 
it's a mix between genius and madness. Madness is when he fumbles. Madness is when he, I don't know, when he, when he just does stupid stuff. But genius are plays like this. Absolutely love it. All right. Johnson. I would like to get the ball to you, but it might also be Cole Komet. Ah, oh, smacked away again. Halfback, quick base. I mean, when I look at the, uh, the defensive setup, it is really hard to figure out a breakthrough here because the coverage just seems to be very, very good. Smacked away. Can't get a separation anywhere. And I do have the improviser tag, so of course I'm going to improvise. Of course I'm going to go for players. This is, this is going to be bum rush time, isn't it? Wow! What a throw! What a catch! Cole Komet! No, that is not Cole Komet. That is Equinemius St. Brown! At the one yard line! To be honest, I was breaking it. I was absolutely breaking it on that one. Woo! Sheesh and all of that. Third quarter. What a throw by Justin Fields. Good run by Equinemius St. Brown. He, I just saw him get free here. Decided to go for him. Long throw. Really long throw. And he was in double coverage as well. Was in double coverage. Cablano. And the thing is, when I threw the ball, I saw two players coming for me. <laughs> so, you know, it's sort of like this. And then suddenly there's Hutchinson breaking through. And number 85, whoever that might be. Who are you? Oh, that's Aquara. Yeesh. Okay. Halfback dive. Off we go. Good Lord. Come on, guys. Jesus, at least we don't lose yards. Oh my God, man. All right, let's set it up differently. Let's go to Mercedes Lewis here. And we're in. I mean, I had to go for the throw here because the run would have been stopped. They have such tough D tackles, edge rushers and linebackers. Not, nobody crazy in there, but the players that they do have are just super, super solid. And you can always see the rushers coming around the corners. Jared Goff. Man, Michael Mayer is sitting there. Come on, defense. Come on, defense. Come on, damn it. All right. At the end of the third half, uh, third quarter, third half. Seven seconds. What do we do? What do we do? All right. Quick reset. Let's get the ball underway. I couldn't get there. It was covered. 24 zone open. Can we just let the clock run down? Let's go with a blunt dive. The right side. Man, they just adjusted for that. Get away, get away, get away, get away from me, damn it. Only one yard. Freaking hell. Third quarter comes to an end. We're in the fourth quarter. If we play this right, we win. If we play this absolutely moronic and stupidly, we're going to lose. Cole Komet. Probably Johnson. We need to bridge nine yards. All right. Well done. 11 out of 21. I think that says a lot. And it's not just it feels that's bad, it's just the the pass coverage was so good today. So so good. Alright, let's go. Right hand side. David Montgomery, do I see a gap? I don't see a gap. But we get forward for six yards. I mean it was just 
brutal, crunchy running. That's all I'm asking for here. Left hand side slightly to the outside run. Do we have a clever? A cle I don't like these. What is that? 1000 lines, seven turns. This is too complicated. Yeah, pushing past Alex Anzalone. Three minutes 42. Clock is going to keep running. So basically, the idea is this. We're going to waste time, okay? We're going to waste time and just trust in our ability to bridge those 45 yards in three minutes. Okay? Are we all down with that? Yeah, there's too little time. Can't react now. Ball is live. We find a gap. And there we go. Six yards. That is good. Six yards, half back, quick base, left hand side. More or less direct. The offensive line will push towards that direction. We are going to let the clock run down. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Number 50 was there, third and inches. Jesus, man. Those linebackers. I'm going to be twisting and turning in my sleep tonight. From time to time, I will be yelling, linebacker! Gonna wake up everybody here. So... All right. I don't know why it's giving me these choices right now. Why would I go with a play-action crosser on third and inches? We're not going to do that, guys. We're going to go the RPO Omaha inside turn run here. First down. All right. One minute 55. Clock is ticking. They haven't not yet called a timeout. So. Okay. I don't have, I don't even have a run play at my disposal. Dudes, what are we doing again? Why do we have to be silly? Jesus, man. Anzalone runs over, smacks the ball away. What a freaking hero. Seriously, man, this is, uh, this is slowly but surely getting out of hand. Slowly but surely getting out of hand. All right, let's adjust. 33 yards in 1 minute and 24 seconds. Right hand side. Get the hell away from me, man! Dude, I am getting pissed right now. I'm getting seriously pissed. What the frick is that? What are they doing? What's number 76 doing? Take a look at that. What is he doing? Just going forward and Anzalone just breaks through and bam, the route was open. Jesus Christ. All right, now is the time where we're going to throw the game away. Now is the time where we need to be better. And we drop the freaking ball, man. What are we doing here again? Dude, why? Man, that is annoying. We had the game in our hands and we're thoroughly giving it away right now. This is the time where we're giving it away. If that, seriously, Sim Brown or Montgomery, one of you two is going to have to step it up and we are not even going to cross that fucking line. Yeah, you're brilliant, man. The game was ours to lose right now. What? Yeah. I mean, the, the rating, again, 145 yards, 50% completion rate. It was just... Man, I hate Alex Anzalone. Sorry, man, but he, he might be a good player, but I just hate his performance in this game now. Montgomery was really trying a lot. 84 yards was just held a lot 
on the receiving side, Cole Komet, Equinemis Brown. We really, really, we tried. We tried everything here. Pinay Sewell, Frank Ragnar allowed the sacks. Braxton Jones made a pancake block. Solo tackle, Jaquan Brisker. And here it comes. Total tackles, number 34, 10 tackles for Alex Anzalone. Tackles for loss, quite a lot of players here. Melvin Ingram gets one, Drew Tranquil, Jalen Carter combine one interception by Avery Young. Oh, that's nice. But, man, was this. Man, was that annoying. Take a look at all of these pass deflections. Thornhill, Anzalone, Okuda, Moose, Rodriguez, Kili Ringo, Kirby Joseph, and one by Eddie Jackson. We are one and six. We are one and six, and I would really like to point out that that is not deserved. That is not a deserved score. We should be so much better. We really, really, really have bad luck at the moment. And, uh, oh, that's pissing me off, man. I, Jesus Christ. I'm really trying hard not to swear, but sometimes it just really is hard. The next three games, we should get something out of those, right? Falcons, Vikings, oh, those are going to be hard. Packers going to be hard, and then away. See the Chargers. Oh, oh this is going to hurt. This is a horrible situation to be in, but at least it's not that far. At least it's close games. Maybe that is some sort of consolation here, but yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Couldn't get another win. Like to have put it two and five, but it's one and six now. And uh, yeah. I hope you enjoyed the episode, though. If you did, drop me a like, subscribe to the channel. It means a lot to me and helps me, of course. And as always, much appreciated that you're here. Sorry about the ranting and the raving, but... Man, I'm passionate about this game. Thanks for being here, guys. See you next time.